Do you know this situation? You're coming home from work, you're really tired because you had a stressful day, you didn't have time to watch the markets, therefore you have only a few hours now for trading. So you get yourself at the trading desk and start screening the market. You're opening the first trade and that might be a great setup, but the trade goes wrong. It ends in a loss. That can always happen in trading. So you're changing the direction because you think that if that direction doesn't work, the other direction should work now. So you're opening a trade into the other direction and this one ends in a loss as well. Now you're getting nervous. You want to really make up these losses. You're getting angry on yourself because of those losses. You want to make up them. And now you're starting to trade again. And another trade follows the other one. You may be changing the markets, opening a trade there and another one. So you're trading and trading and trading. And by the end of the day, your trading account is almost gone. Does that sound familiar to you? It's so unnecessary because there are really simple steps to avoid this. There's a name for it. It's called overtrading. I see, I see so many traders that are overtrading. It happens to so many people, especially in the beginning. Therefore, I want to make this video with seven steps to avoid overtrading in order to keep you safe from it. So by the end of this video, you will know how to avoid it. And if you have made this experience so far, so you won't make it again, or maybe if you haven't yet, you avoid to do it at all. Set some steps to avoid. But first, let's talk about what overtrading really is. Most people are not aware of it and also don't know that they might be affected themselves. Because overtrading happens so fast in your subconscious mind. You're trading and trading and trading, maybe 20, maybe 30 or even 40 or 50 trades a day. If you have a really good setup, only five star setups for every trade, then it is fine. But in most cases, people don't, and that's when it's called overtrading. So let's be honest, are you doing that? Overtrading is a result of a combination of different factors. Let's see which factors that could be. So factors that lead into overtrading. That can be a lack of trust, a lack of focus, also really often greed, fear, also maybe boredom and anger. These are all emotions that you have to avoid in over to don't end in over trading. These factors can lead you in a downward spiral really fast. It's your subconscious mind which is having these emotions. And in trading, there is no room for it. Therefore, let's have a look how to avoid them. First step, like it always is, if you have a problem, recognize it. So, oops. Recognize overtrading. For that, really be honest to yourself. Because if you're not honest, you can't recognize it. And if you don't recognize it, you can't work on it. Therefore, it's really important. Make yourself clear. You want to be successful in trading. And even if it's hard, you have to be really honest for that reason. Are you over trading or not? If you do, take a breath, reflect yourself and recognize it. Accept it in order to work on it. 
Second step. Avoid FOMO. FOMO is the fear of missing out. Especially in the beginners, I really often see traders when the market is moving with a strong momentum. They really want to go with it, but there's no reason to get in every movement of the market. Focus on your strategy. That's a really important fact. Trust your strategy and focus on it. That way you won't miss out any important trades. Because if you concentrate on your good setups, there is no reason to fear of missing out. And the third step is take breaks. Why am I saying that? Because sometimes you get too deep into it. Your subconscious mind is overtaking and you might not recognize that you are falling into these emotions again. And therefore, take breaks sometimes. Just a few minutes. Maybe one, two, take a deep breath, stand up from your trading desk, maybe walk in front of your door and take a deep breath outside. And then after that break, you are free in your mind and can concentrate on what is important for your trading. So this leads us to step number four. Don't trade with money you rely on. Psychologically, it's a really, really important factor. Because if you rely on the money you trade with, you're automatically connected emotionally with it. And if you are connected emotionally with it, it's just not possible to exactly follow the rules. You will end up in overtrading again. So really make sure that not only the setups you trade are really five star setups, but that you are set up with your mind for that trading as well. And if you are afraid of not being focused enough, going into those emotions again, set yourself a daily loss limit. There is no shame at all in setting a daily loss limit. And that's what institutional traders are doing as well. So for example, if you are trading 1% 1 of your trading account per trade, if you have reached 5% loss limit, or maybe you set it by three, just an example, make your rule clear. And if you have reached that level, stop trading for that day. Just close every trade, get up, recover, and start new, fresh the next day. Remember. And this leads us to step number six. Don't set profit targets daily. If you set yourself profit targets, for example, you want to make $500 a day, you know it's possible to trade long-term profitable in trading. But this doesn't mean if you're doing an average, for example, $5,000 a month, doesn't mean that you're exactly making $250 a day. There may be days where you even make 1,000 and days where you only make 100 or maybe minus 200. So don't pressure yourself because then it's really easy to fall into this again. Because if the end of the day is coming close and you haven't reached your profit target, 
What are you gonna do? You're looking for traits that you push, you force yourself into traits that you wouldn't have opened otherwise, just in order to reach that target. And what do you think how this is gonna end? Is it gonna work out? Don't think so. It's gonna end in overtrading and in blowing up your account. So my last step for you is create a balance. What, I, what do I mean with this? For example, have a hobby or if you like to spend time with your family, make sure you do. You have to recover your mind. You have to free it. There has to be a balance between your free time and your trading time. Your mind just needs to recover. So take a look. What do you really like to do? What makes you relax? And then just make sure you do it regularly to create a balance. These are the seven really important steps to avoid overtrading. If you follow these steps, you won't step into the trap of overtrading again. If you're still in the beginning of trading, you might think, oh, all this trading psychology, all nonsense. But believe me, this moment where you will realize that this is really important will come faster than you think. So please make sure that you really question yourself. Are you over trading or not? And if you are, please take the necessary steps to avoid it, to not trap yourself again. If you need help with that, you'll find below this video a link to my free telegram group where I have more content for you and also a trading signets group which can really help you to solve this problem. So click now on the link below and I will see you there. Bye bye.